All right, last section of chapter one, math modeling and variation. So in this section, we are going to be talking about things like taking data and seeing if we could make a model for them so we can predict what's going to happen in the future. In this list, we've got data from 2000 to 2007 and the resulting population. And can we come up with some equation so that if we wanted to make a guess for 2008, we would have a reasonable expectation for population? knowing that we're not going to be able to predict 2008 exactly, only that we're going to come up with a good approximation. So in the first example here, the book has given us a line that represents a pretty good approximation of these uh, data points. And so we want to plot the actual data and the model on the same graph. How closely does the model represent the data? Let's go ahead and take a look. So what we're looking at here, T, is going to be our x axis value, that's our time, time 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 7. And then our actual values, 282.4, is what the actual population was. We had this equation that was a pretty good guess, and when we plug 0 into this equation, we get 282.5. So the actual data is 0.4, we would have guessed for that year that the population would have been 0.5. So off by a little bit. And so that's here in the straight line is our model, the guess. And then the actual points are the data points 282.4, 285.3 that we actually know for sure. So if we went in the future, we could extend this line out, but we wouldn't have any more dots because we don't have any th more points that we know for sure the line would represent just a guess of what would happen in the future. So as you can see in this situation, the model, Y star, is a pretty good approximation of the actual data Y. So go ahead and try this for problem 11. Go ahead and make a scatter plot. You can do this on your calculator, which is how I'll show the answer here in a second, or you can do it by hand on a graph. All right, if you're back and ready to look at the answer, here we go. I'm going to switch out of the PowerPoint and bring up our calculator view. Now we want to be in a list if we want to be doing scatter plots. So just a reminder of how we get there, just the stat button. Tempted to do second stat because it says list above it, but just the stat button and then hitting enter. And then we've got our list here. And if we want to clear this out, we could go up above it and hit clear, enter, and it's going to clear the whole list for us. So looking back at our numbers, we start in two Let's see, that's one ahead. Where's the actual view? There we go. We're starting in 1992, and down here it says t equals 2. So we'll start with 2, and we're going all the way through 2007. So back to the calculator. We'll start with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 is 2,000. And we want to go all the way to 17. 2007 and then we'll go over to our list 2 and enter in the corresponding data and I'm going to open it up in my book here so I don't have to be flipping back and forth so take a second to enter it in ahead and feel free to fast forward through this part.
Oh, all right, we've got all of our data here. We want to go ahead and plot this on the line. And we also need to come up with the equation that they gave us in problem 11. So I'm going to go ahead and punch in our equation first. It says y equals 16, 95.9t. We can use x here. Plus. 124, 320. So we've got our equation in there. If I were to just go ahead and graph this right away, notice that nothing good is going to happen because, of course, our window's really screwed up. And go back in here. If we want to get our list to show up, we need to go up to plot and hit enter so that plot becomes highlighted. All right, let's change our window, see what we want to use. Our smallest x was 0 and our largest was 17, so 0 to 20 seems reasonable to me. And our smallest y value was 128,105. So I'm just going to say 128,000. Our largest was 153,000. So I'll say 155,000. And if we counted by ones, that would not uh, that would take a long time for our calculator to grab this. So I'm going to actually count by thousands on there. Go ahead and graph that. And there we go. All of these dots represent the list that we popped in and the line is our guess for what the dots should be in our assumed model. So as you can see our model is pretty good because all of the dots are pretty close to where we thought they would be. If the dots were bouncing all over the place then our model wouldn't be a very good, uh, wouldn't be very useful for guessing new information in the future.